go. Water's about 45 degrees. I think, ooh, sitting in it. That's a conservative estimate. Whoa! Yes. Time for some longer. Let's do pants. Or a scupper drain. Yeah, that'll wake you up. Okay, so. Yes, yes. A little bit of water got in the boat. And. Okay. Well, not real okay, but that's the way it is. Hey, how much for that wind shadow? We are busily cutting cross section here, but as you see, we're doing all right. We are not far from shore. It's not a wild paddle. It's mostly this park-like area of the sound. That's West Seattle, that peninsula ahead. I live at the top of that peninsula, and I can't really see my house from here. Two trees in the way, but we can usually see from there down to the park that I just pulled out of. down just a hair. I'll situate my big feet. Uh, another thing that's going to change about this design, when I put her on the heart and start working on her. There uh, we are now. I'm getting a nice look at the area. That's Fashion Island over there. It's a relatively quiet day on the water. Not have much company. Looks like a sailboat over there. Off of probably Fauntleroy. Small island. That small island in ahead. That's Blake Island, Marine Park. The entire island is a marine park. You can only access it via boat. It's quite beautiful over there. Not old growth though, it was logged out in the middle 1800s, but the trees are in good shape. I see a buoy ahead. And there's the plundering tree, or oh, he's got a crab trap down. Oh, there's two of them. Yep, somebody must be fishing. Crabbing. Means your water's clear and clean. Good sign. I got a couple of crab traps down. Or pots, as they call them. Very 
across here. Looks like we have some swells forming. A bit of blossom. It's a little rough to be able to see things like jellyfish. But, uh, you know, as we go, we're good. One thing I like about this craft for this kind of water, it really is made for ocean swells. Uh, we're going against them. There's a nice rocker on this boat. It makes it possible for the ocean swell to just, uh, pick you up and move you forward if you're moving in the direction of the swell's motion. Which is pretty fun. Like a little bit of surfing. But this is a very stable paddle board. As I mentioned earlier. You have to be pretty drunk to fall out of this boat, is what I like to say. I'm not a drinking man these days. <clears throat> nice smell coming up. Can you see? Woohoo! Yay! Woo. Uh, okay, not that exciting, but, you know, we have been watching TV. Oh. It's like the uh, waves are starting to build on nothing white caps yet. Soon. A baby one. But we'll just cut across over here and see what the wind tells us. Yeah. Well, no white cap be over there. I want to get a little more in parallel with it. Sure. It's always good to face these boogers head on. And not let them flush. The water's cool enough, definitely. But, um, we really get biting cold here until the spring. And then, strangely, the water, of course, has lagged from winter temperatures. Icy and worse, cold and freezing. And it can actually blind you. I have found being stuck in a squall in the middle of March. So, it is beautiful. A little too civilized right here for my taste, but hell. This is my maiden voyage with my first big camera. Brought to you by my mom, Megan Simon, and Chris and Connie and Max. And even though they included the dog, the cat, the bird, and the turtle on the card, I personally don't believe that they actually made a contribution, especially the turtle. He's a cheap bastard. He's never, never take, never picked up a check. So now we're heading for the peninsula and the wonderful mid-century houses up there. Oh gosh, it's giving me a little weather helm here. Coming back and going out. That's cool.
necessary to pick up a bit. If I were in a kayak, I wouldn't be happy with this water. I'd be bounce all over. Worried about rolling. But on this board, flash kayak. Like I said, you gotta be pretty drunk to fall off this boat. Or the water has to be pretty high. I suppose if you're going in on surfing side waves, waves three to four foot, that would probably give you a little bit of more excitement than you wanted that day. Especially in this temperature. We're getting some rolling swells, they're quite pretty. Sidewise, and just relax. And there you have it. A uh, big nothing as the Roach sisters so wonderfully boastful. I can cut over here a bit. Maybe we can get a look at the wild, wild life. Some of the moorings were taken out that were out here. That's the shipping lane over there. So, that mark the shipping lane boundaries. I must have lost those in the last week. We had a pretty big blow last week. A lot of those things get old. Change them up now. Point of this vehicle. Great suspension. Nicely seasoned plank for a barbecuing salmon and sugar. It over a bit. So I'm gonna stay this course I'm just a bit closer to the shore, which as you see is completely inhabited by humans. Yeah. 
down at degrees. It looks like it's shifted coming in from past the point. So I might be able to skim past it. Interesting. Interesting thought. What if you guys are watching this pop through the point? <laughs> Somebody uploads this from my family. Which I hope they do if that is the case. I'm sure enjoying this. I think that's the best thing. The most important thing to remember about these kinds of hobbies where things can go badly wrong. Enjoy this incredible planet. But it's a gusty day. I'm not gonna bust my chops. Yeah, you can see the wind now. It's trying to make up her mind over here. And the waves are, of course, getting a little bit smaller as they're direction of the head that can be used. change I might make to this girl is I may extend her V another inch and a quarter and carry it up the bow a bit more. Her bow is almost perfectly round and flat then and uh, triangular Ooh. little leather helmy so I think she'll probably on a street or track. This one also going to lengthen. Well, I don't want to say this while she's listening, but I am going to make some changes to her fin configuration that I believe will be good ideas for this kind of water, which, you know, if you're in warm water, when you're paddling along and the water's like this, and you don't really care. Um, if you fall out, which I don't think I'm going to here, but I'm just saying, get the occasional bow wave from one of these shipping container ships, or one of those ferries, like the one ahead of us there, which is a big bugger, and you're not paying attention, you're just facing out and nodding out. Dreaming, and then it's in the water. And it's uh, 45 degree water, even though I have a wetsuit on and a uh, waterproof sailing smock. I'm not all that well sealed against the weather. In fact, this will probably be my last time of coming out in shorts. I have to start wearing my long sleeves, long legged. My suits. This water temperature didn't move too much. Ah. I'm using my right hand feels a little chilly. I don't know. some white caps for me now outside the cove and that's going to be coming in we'll be 
turning around once we get over to the point a bit. Just going to do about a six mile paddle. And the point is about three miles from where we put in. vessels for this water have huge, huge bow constructions. I think they're made so we can go out and drop nets and then lean into them, pull them up. But they're also war canoes, so they make it easy to uh, move fast, no matter how high, high the waves are. But many Child and found their final resting place in these waters. One of the most interesting stories from around here is of the ghost fairy, a fairy that sank in 1896 or something like that. Anyway, took quite a few people with it, and it was a steam driven fairy. And I have heard more than one person tell me that when they were on the water and the fog was heavy, they heard that steam engine heading straight for them in a very eerie and unsettling way. Turned on all their lights. no difference and suddenly would stop as if the craft itself simply ceased to exist. So, you never know. Sailors have got some good stories, I'll tell you. Actually, sailors have got the best stories. When you're out here and it starts kicking up a fog. So how nice the water is being for me to tell my little stories. When it starts kicking up a fuss, the uh, the only thing that you have is you. And if you've ever meditated and you have a hard time getting to who you are and you keep having to brush things aside and keep having to Stop obsessing about what you're going to do about this or that. You don't have that problem out here when the wind is trying to tear you from your ship and <laughs> turn your boat end over and <laughs> the bow to stern <laughs> like a uh, like one of those bull rides, barroom bull rides on acid. They're like, uh, they're like nothing compared to what it is to hang onto a ship with the, with the wind strafing your face, blinding you, literally blinding you so that you have to close your eyes. And let your eyeballs thaw out so you can see. Likely little birds, it looks like a couple of puffins, horned puffins perhaps. I you can see that. Well, here are the buoys for the people that have boats to moor their craft to. Go and pay, you know, the marina fees. being stirred, but I should probably actually see it presently. This is something 
you cannot do in a kayak. You cannot just twist around, lay back, relax, fart around, unless it's a sit on top that's very stable and boring. And, um, and still go fairly quickly in the water. Um, I'm just using the brake over here. The uh, wind's coming up. The wind shadow is sort of quickly disappearing. Now. We're getting into a little wind gully over here, so I'm gonna stay around these moorings. Beautiful Puget Sound ducks. I do like how this craft works though, although I'm not crazy about how it claps in the front. And however, the price you pay for a craft that you can turn a 180 in, where you fit. It's an interesting combination of horrible postmodernism everywhere that has kind of descended my dark smog over the cracks made in modern and international style. Wow, what are you going to do? Postmodern era. It was a prosperous one, unfortunately. So there's lots of stuff from it. A bit, yeah.
until we see a break. And then we'll turn and do the 180 I was talking about. And it's cool. See, check it out, check it out. direction we came from right now. So far not so that's nice to end. Uh, those swells are catching me and doing your show. I can just go with it. Nineteen foot long, and the swells look like they're what about nine foot apart, eight foot, nine foot apart. So when she's riding on three, look how steady she is. She doesn't even feel like we're going fast, and yet I look at the shoreline. I can see I'm making some progress. Very interesting. Having yeah, this kind of a crest on this kind of water. My stern down a little bit. Front suit make my stern look fat. I'm just riding the flow. Give me a shove. A shove of love. Whoa. What's happening over there? Yeah, things are getting kind of fun here. It looks like the wind has decided it's going to play. Dashing along over there in some kind of speed boat, which I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope they ain't drinking on so that they don't see what the hell's on the water with them. That thing looks like it is cranking. But as I say, if this is a posthumous viewing of my trip today, be sure to note who's responsible. You can see their fucking asses off. Yeah, look at these idiots. Really, really, really bare one. Oh, they might be the ones who are going after the crab pots. I think I'm not seeing them stuck. I think they're craft. Is that a cat? Some kind of construction boat looks like. Corps of Engineers, oh, I'm reassured of my safety now. Damn. <clears throat> Mono is, if you want something done, terribly wrong. Give us a call.
Oh, it's time to eat. I can see the bottom here. It's very shallow. See how clean the water is here? See how deep it is. Only four or five foot. The water is so clean. So it reflects off the bottom, which is not particularly bright pan, and still it comes back up. Nice. Let's see. I'm going to zoom in here. Hoping to come up with at least a sea star or a jellyfish for you, but let's see how that goes. and peaceful back here, maybe I'll just stay in the water for a while. Huh. I should have found that before I went out paddling with the camera on my head. Let me just get across over here so it looks like it's coming down. Take a look at Tree Tree Point. Trees you see there at the end of the park. There's some old growth in there. There's some stumps in there that are six foot in diameter and very old. Because the fur doesn't rot. Pretty much have to be eaten up by moss. It's kind of easy to imagine this area in a primeval state, but... I think I would rather be paddling in something where it isn't a primeval state, like up in the Olympic Peninsula. Oh, it's just about every, everywhere on the water now. In the world. In the world. You look on Google Earth, you'll see. Iberia is logged. Iberia, which used to be Siberia. Now it's a checkerboard area where it has gone in and killed the trees. Somebody's basement they're draining out over there. These people sure are on the water, aren't they? They are literally in it. There's some nice modern houses up there. 